All right. Hello, Naka seniors. This is lecture 2.3, Island Biogeography. This is the third lecture of Unit 2. So the objectives for this video or the skills um, are to be able to describe the role of island bio, biogeography and evolution and to describe environmental concepts and processes are the skills. Um, so you can take a, a, a second and read through the essential knowledge. Um, it's the study of ecological relationships and distribution of organisms on islands and these organisms community structures. So um, islands have been colonized in the past by new species arriving from elsewhere. And then the other essential knowledge is many island species have evolved to be specialists versus generalists because of the limited resources such as food and territory on most islands. The long-term survival of specialists may be jeopardized if and when invasive species, typically generalists, are introduced and outcompete the specialists. That's what we're trying to learn today. So follow along in your notes, please, um, in your packets. I want you to make sure you capture this info. So island biogeography is the study of ecological relationships and the distribution of organisms on islands and of these organisms, community structures. So how they work in communities on islands. And island bi biogeography is um, where islands can also be actual islands in the body of water or they can be figurative habitat islands, such as Central Park in New York City or National Park surrounded by human developed land. So there could be an island of nature within an urban environment that would still be considered an island. The same things would, would affect it because it's isolated, right? The wildlife can exist in these areas. <clears throat> All right, so this is the study of ecological relationships and community structure on islands. And there are two basic rules of island biogeography. And these are the really important things to take down and understand. So larger islands support more total species. <clears throat> kind of intuitive, right? The larger the island, the greater the ecosystem diversity. And the greater the ecosystem diversity, the more food and habitat resources. There are more niches or roles organisms can play in the ecosystem or places where they can exist, types of food where they can be specialized. Islands closer to the mainland support more species it's because it's easy for organisms to get to the island from mainland, right? And so there's more colonizing organisms, more organisms come over. And so there's more genetic diversity in the population. And so if you're looking at this, um, you see the number of species goes up as the island gets bigger. See that? There's a direct correlation there. And we're going to talk about that more. But there's two things. So there's size and distance. The farther we get, the number of species also goes down. All right. So again, larger islands support more species. So there's higher ecosystem diversity. There's more available niches or roles. So these would be um, niches that the animal could specialize into. Um, there's pampa zone, scalesia zone, transition zone, arid zone. Um, all of the different food sources that are different that are available to different birds on the Galapagos Island in Ecuador would be an example, right? So those are all the different possible habitats the animal can live in. And larger population size, uh, more genetically diverse and more resistant to environmental disturbance. Also lower extinction rate, so species are less likely to die off. Um, there's a positive correlation between island size and species richness or the total number of species. So we, we call this a positive correlation. That's an important terminology for you to know. So it's completely linear. As the island increases in size, so does the number of species. 
So this is the total number of reptilian and amphibian species in the Western Indies. And as you can see, as, as the islands get bigger, there are more species. And then the distance. So the closer to the mainland, the higher the species richness. It's easier for more species to migrate. There's more continual migration of individuals and there's more genetic diversity in that reason. Um, so there's less resources. So birds use different ones more rapidly and the se selective pressure of, um, causes a lot more micro habitats and that way um, species evolve more quickly. Okay. And we're going to talk more about that, but um, you can see in this graph, larger islands have more colonists and lower rates of extinction compared to smaller islands. So if you see the, the um, small islands or large islands, um, the extinction goes up a lot as the um, island gets smaller. So basically what you see here is that um, as more species move in, usually the extinction rate goes in because they take, take the role places of, of species that already live there. And the bigger islands that are closer are more adapted to this. But if they're small and far away, the rate of uh, extinction goes up quite a bit. Okay. Next slide. So evolution on islands. So islands have limited space and resources, creating unique conditions for evolution. There's more pressure for species to adapt to narrower niches or more specific food and habitats on a small island. So that means that single species rapidly evolve into several new species to use different resources and reduce competition. So on small on islands, you often see more greater diversity of, of species because they're all competing for um, less different spaces that they can occupy on the island. So for example, the um, Galapagos finch is an example of this. So um, you can see here that um, there's a common ancestor that migrated onto the island. And due to these different habitat zones, um, you have ground finches that adapted to different types of seeds from cactus and flower eating. There's tree finches that all adapted to the different insects. And so they all have different be um, beaks. And then you have warbler finches that are insect eaters. And look how different their beaches, uh, beaks are. And we can see due to DNA and genetics, we can figure out um, which birds um, how they've evolved and how they've adapted. And this is how evolution was originally discovered on these islands, because there's so much less space, again, that they all de evolve more quickly into all these different little roles that they can serve on that island. So two more things is islands are colonized by new species and also from humans now. And um, most island species are specialists, meaning they're really they have a really specific things that they need. They require really specific food and really specific conditions. And so they're really vulnerable to invasives because if anything gets disturbed, they can go extinct. So invasive species, um, when they get introduced to islands, it's like escalated. And um, in places like Hawaii, we see much bigger rates of extinction. <clears throat> All right, so now you're going to do a practice free response question. In your notes, I want you to try to describe the process of colonizing an island habitat and describe how the island's distance from the mainland influences the number of species that will colonize the island habitat. You can pause the video here. The video is going to end and try to record this in your notes. Thanks, everybody. Let me know if you have any questions.